I think the title of the video says it all. I finally pulled the trigger and bought a new Super Telephoto lens. I have been using the Canon EF 600mm f4 of the second generation for about four and a half years now and in general I have been very happy with it. But after I got the opportunity to test the Nikkor Z 600mm f4 with the integrated tele-extender, I need to say I really also wanted to have a lighter and more modern lens. A bit later this year, in June, I spent several days in Singapore. It was for my work as a biologist, but I also had the opportunity to go out on two or three days and take some pictures in the rainforest. I only had my Canon RF 100 to 500 mm f4.5 to 7.1 with me. And while I was generally happy with the performance and I was amazed with the stabilizer, I also realized how dark it can be in the rainforest and I was sometimes taking pictures at a 30th or 50th of a second handheld and this is just something that would not have been possible with the weight and the not so good stabilizer of my EF 600mm f4. And since I'm going to visit the tropical rainforest again a bit later this year, but this time really for photography and filming, I wanted to buy a new lens. But the next question was, which lens should it be? And I was hesitating a bit about switching to a 400mm 2.8, but in the end I decided to stick with a 600mm f4, mainly because I most of the times shoot rather small birds, and there I'm really happy about this extra 200mm of reach. And with this question out of the way, I needed to decide for a specific model. And I was very happy with the performance and the usability of the Nikkor Z 600mm f4. On the other hand, there is also the Canon RF 600mm f4. So both are very interesting lenses and in this video I want to compare the two and tell you which one I bought in the end and why. So let's have a quick look at the specification of both lenses because even though they're both 600mm f4 lenses, there are quite some differences. So if we look at the diameter of the lens, this is very similar. The Nikon is at 16.5cm, the Canon at 168 and I think here the deciding factor for this diameter is just the aperture f4 that makes these lenses quite big. However, there is quite a difference in the length of the lens. So the Nikon is 43.7cm long. Um, the Canon 47.2, so that's a difference of 3.5 centimeters, um, more than an inch, and you can definitely feel this difference if you want to store the lens in your backpack. I also want to add that the lens hood of the Canon is much larger than the one of the Nikon, and I clearly prefer the shorter lens hood of the Nikon. You can buy a separate shorter lens hood for the Canon lens, but first of all it costs several hundred dollars and second of all it seems to be very hard to find. Personally I think the weight is more important than the dimensions though. And if we look at the weight, the Nikon comes at 3260 grams, whereas the Canon comes at 3090 grams. So on paper the Canon is 170 grams lighter. Why do I say on paper? Because I actually measured them on my kitchen scale at home and the Canon was actually only 120 grams lighter than the Nikon. You might wonder why is there a difference from the official specification and what I measured. Well the official specifications are just a bare lens, so without a lens hood and without a, a lens foot. However I think in real life we will use the lens with both of them, right? We might exchange the lens foot for a different model, but in the end we will use it with one. So I think it's maybe also important to keep this in mind that the difference is not as big as it seems on paper, mainly because the lens hood of Nikon is really shorter and therefore also lighter. We should also consider that the Nikon has an integrated 1.4 extender that the Canon does not have, meaning that first of all the dimensions get even bigger if you add the 1.4 extender to the Canon, and second of all it also increases in weight. So if we add the 1.4 extender, the Nikon obviously stays at 3260 grams, the Canon gets 3315 grams, again this is just the specifications on the paper. So on paper the Canon is now 50 grams heavier than the Nikon, but as I said, in real life, if you include the lens hood and foot, this difference will be bigger. The minimum focus distance of both lenses is a bit shorter than the one of my old EF 600mm of the second generation. So for the Nikon it's 4.3 meters, for the Canon 4.2. 
and the maximum magnification you can get is 0.14 with the Nikon and 0.15 with the Canon, so basically no difference. So to sum up, for some categories the Canon is better, for some the Nikon. I think overall I would say the Nikon has a slight edge on paper, especially with this killer feature of a built-in tele-extender that you can just switch in and out with, uh, with the movement of your finger. So in the end I made up my mind and I bought the Canon RF 600mm f4. Why? If I just said that overall I think I prefer the 600mm f4 from Nikon, why would I buy the Canon? There's basically three reasons and I'm going to tell them to you now. The first and to be honest quite important one is the price. So in Switzerland right now the RF 600mm f4 costs around 12,600 Swiss francs. The Nikkor Z 600mm f4 costs around 18,500 Swiss francs. So that's a difference of almost 6,000 Swiss francs or a 50% surcharge for the Nikon 600mm. But then I also need to consider that I can still sell my EF 600mm f4 of the second generation. Let's assume that with the lens code and the extra foot I can sell it for around 7,500 Swiss francs. This would mean that I pay 5,000 extra for getting the RF version of the 600mm f4, but almost 11,000 extra for the Nikon Z600. So in this sense, I pay double for getting the Z600 compared to the RF 600mm f4. The second and quite obvious point is that I cannot mount the Nikon Z600 mm f4 on my Canon R5. This means I need to buy a Nikon camera such as the Z8. And this means that if I want to bring my 600 mm f4 plus a shorter lens like 100 to 500, I actually need to use two camera systems and therefore I also need to bring two cameras. I cannot get away with just bringing one camera and switching lenses. And a complete change of system is just out of question, again, mainly due to financial reasons. And speaking about finances, I would also need to buy a Z8, which in Switzerland retails around 4,500 Swiss francs at the moment. And this is just an extra investment because it cannot replace my, uh, one of my R5s. Because if maybe one day I go out with my 100 to 500 on the R5 and I want to film myself, I still need two R5s. So it's adding another 4,500 for the camera. Also, I will be shooting with two camera systems in parallel. However, that's not a deal breaker for me. I'm also quite fine with how the Nikon works. Um, and with the customization that you have nowadays, you can customize them in a very similar way. And the third reason is that if I'm honest, when I tested the Z9 in February with the 600mm f4, so this was firmware th version 3, the autofocus was just not as good as the one of the R5. Don't get me wrong, the tracking worked excellent and it was really on par with the R5, but it was just the subject recognition. And not the subject recognition against lakes, rivers or the sky, but against bushes in the background or reeds. So it would constantly jump on the reeds. I really tried different autofocus areas with the 3D tracking, without 3D tracking, and my R5 was just picking them up much quicker. I mean, there were some workarounds with using the focus preset, but I really overall pr preferred the R5 here. So that was also something that made me lean a bit more towards Canon. So due to these three reasons, I then decided to stay with Canon and buy the RF 600mm f4. But there are also some very good reasons to pick up a Nikon Z600. And if I would not have owned any Canon gear before, so if I would have a complete fresh start, I'm not really sure if my decision would have been the same or if I might have gone with the Nikon. But I can tell you 100% if I would already have owned Nikon, I would have stayed with Nikon because and this is personal opinion, but I think nowadays if you have Sony, Nikon or Canon, there is not really not much reason to change the system because it's always, there is always a financial loss. It might take you time to get accustomed to the new re system. You might realize that not everything is really yeah, greener. The grass is not always greener on the other side. There is always some downsides with other systems as well. And finally, yeah, it might be that maybe Nikon has the edge in some things today, Canon has the edge on some other things today, but this can just flip around in like six months, one year or two years. And at the moment, I think both Nikon, Sony and Canon are really on a high level. And for me here, it's just not worth losing money and time for switching systems. The one thing I am really jealous though for Nikon shooters is the integrated tele extender that you can just uh, like 
switch on and off. And I really hope that these rumors that we heard are true, that Canon is working on kind of a variable tele extender that you can add to the RF Super Telephoto lenses. We will see. We will also see how happy I will be with my RF 600mm f4. So I'm planning to do a full review. I'm not sure when, if it will be in six months or maybe in a year after I have a lot of experiences with it. And if you have some specific question, please let them know in the comments and I will try to address them.